I don't know if anybody expected this. I don't know if anybody's gonna watch this and use my tips, but here it is. This is the best way to start Oblivion. Now I'm just gonna say right off the top, this is just what I do all the time. The video I wish I had, I'm gonna go over tons of boosting skills, tons of loot, tons of DLC content, just because I just wanted to give you guys all of my expertise on this game and go over all the stuff that I do in the order I do it and more. There's not going to be any hand holding. We're going to be moving really, really fast. So that being said, we're going to jump right in. The first thing you want to do is try to make a character that doesn't look completely fucked. It might take you a little bit of effort and some time, but you can get it done. And then you can be immersed by these chains that move. Wow. All right. Now you want to hotkey your stuff. I'm high elf, so I have fire and health always and then before you leave this guy's body make sure you grab this sword and then make sure that you guys that you get every single lock pick and arrow and potion and scroll from this whole first part you can leave all the rusty stuff but all that stuff you want to make sure you get it and pick every single chest that you can all right now making your way through the first door the only chest i'm going to actually point out is this one because this is what has the first set of armor Yay. Okay, and then as you make your way through everything, the next thing I'm going to point out is the immersion of hitting traps and killing goblins. I remember when this excited me to no end. Oh my god. Okay, guys, then the next final thing in this whole little first area is just this goblin and the chest that is right beside him. You want to take all the soul gems, all the rubies, his goblin staff, and then pick this chest this has the most stuff in the whole tutorial area and just real quick i'm going to show you to repair armor you need to click on hammers and to repair enchanted armor your repair skill has to be at 50 so keep that in mind after you make your way through the first little cave uriel is going to come up to you and ask you which sign you want i choose the mage because i'm always a mage build and it gives you an extra 50 magic but you might not choose that that part doesn't actually matter just choose what you like most and then make your way through the cave I can go no further. What are you talking about, Close Uriel? Shut the jaws of oblivion. Oh my god, I didn't even have time to react. Okay, now, after you kill that guy and this guy comes in and asks you what you want for this, I do intelligence and willpower just because, again, I'm a mage. Then you have to choose seven skills that actually affect your level. So I do alteration, conjuration, destruction, illusion, mysticism, um restoration and security but only do security if you have the thieves den dlc for pure boosting purposes and those major skills are the only skills that when you level up it actually affects your overall level and then the second you leave the first thing i always do is i come to the imperial city market district okay guys i'm going to quickly show you something the wizard's tower dlc is the most important and essential dlc for me personally as a mage and if you own it you can come this way and come into this shop and you automatically own everything that's in here. You don't have to own that DLC to do what I'm about to show you though. So I collect everything in here and then I get the pants of fatigue, the boots of feather, cause that's the best thing we got up until this point. And then I collect everything and sell it to both of those vendors that are in this building. And then once you do that, all right, you want to buy 10 scrolls and this is key for me you guys some people don't like to cheat but i sure am a cheater and i like getting as far ahead as i can because i've played this game so many times and it doesn't matter to me so for a duplicate glitch you need 10 or more scrolls all right and then you just press a on the scroll press x on whatever you want duplicated and it will make that many items as scrolls you have all right so again i'll show you press a Go to the potion you want duplicated, press X, and you know, it works for lots of things, not everything, but this is just so I can get a bunch of money right at the start, okay? So I got 30 of these potions, I sell them all to her so that I can get just over $2,000 to buy her most expensive potion. This girl is a DLC character of the Wizard's Tower, but like I said, you can still duplicate all this and not worry about that, all right? I've already sold 100 here, so I have over 100,000, but I just wanna show you guys to haggle so that they're worth the most amount of money, sell two at a time, and I duplicated 300 potions, and in no time I have over 300,000 thousand dollars now i always buy beast of burden because that's a very good unique spell that you can actually make a spell that good um and then i buy the rest just so i have them and then i come to this guy and i buy all of his spells 
because in Oblivion, the only way that you can make spells is if you have spells that you bought from traders. And then since we have so much money right off the hop, I just buy Hands of the Atronaut, which is one of the best uh, gauntlets in the whole game. And we're just going to be clearing out the whole market here since we have $300,000. And then, yeah, once I do that, then I come to this spell shop and I buy all of these spells. And this guy's got some good ones for sure. And ease burden, we definitely need to carry around all the stuff we're about to buy. Okay, and then I come into this uh, staff shop. I get Apotheses, which is the best staff in the game. And I always, always buy the red silk robes and hood because that is my favorite mage outfit in the whole game. And then we're already doing real good. We're a killer, powerful mage already. All right. Now, we're going to be hitting up the best defense. And I'm going to show you... This chest piece here, Ages of the Apocalypse, got a couple negative effects, but this early in the game, it's still a great, amazing piece of armor, right? We're going to be really mismatched by the end of this. And then I come into this shop, and you can buy Battle Axe of Hatred, which isn't the best, doesn't do the most damage, spells aren't that great. But like I said, at the beginning, this is all good stuff. All right, and then moving on, I like to always come here. And this is actually the best sword you can get up to this point by far in this general goods trader. The, the Akaviri Warblade. It's far, far better than the Battle Axe of Hatred. Two-handed Katana. And yeah. We're looking good. And then after this, I'm just going to touch on this other set right here of a dwarven helmet and it does light 60 and it has a bunch of resistant effects and if you're going through any dark dungeons this will certainly light the whole thing up and blind you 60 feet of light it can be annoying at times all right and then you come to this miscellaneous trader and he has a set of pants that enhance all of your personality traits for better prices and haggling and that kind of stuff i don't ever use it but i just wanted to show you guys every good piece of armor in the whole market okay and after that we're just going to the shield store where we're going to be picking up tower of the nine which is certainly the best shield you can get up to this point eight thousand bucks boom okay now i'm just going to show you guys what we just collected entirely and how it looks and then if you're overweight you use ease burden to keep walking and this is what we got going on so far. Yeah. And my favorite, the red silk robes. Okay guys, now we're gonna be talking about the Wizard's Tower DLC, Frost Craig Spire. This is always the first thing I do. I come here because if you have this DLC, then you don't have to get every single Mage's Guild recommendation from every single city in order to make spells and enchant armors. This isn't my favorite DLC, but it is the most practical. It's the one that gets me the farthest ahead, certainly. So you just come in, read that book, la la la. And then you just have to go back to that same lady in the store. And she will sell you all of the upgrades. Now you only need to buy the four pieces of paper. And then the candles for the two places to enchant and make spells. Put those there. And now we can make spells and enchant armor. But before we do that, I'm going to show you guys a couple separate mages guilds to get some of my favorite spells. And as well as drop all the stuff we picked up from the market into this container. And then this place has a door where you can teleport to each and every mages guild, which is really nice and handy. But if you don't have this DLC, you can still go to these mages guilds and get these same spells. You'll just have to go to the city and actually walk to each one. So we're going to start by going to Skingrad. I come and talk to this girl. What? And then you want to get open lock. Well, and then you talk to this guy. And you're going to want to get corrode armor. And weakness to shock, weakness to frost. Some good ones. And then you just talk to any person at any mages guild, the head of the little area. And ask them about the recommendations. And they will make you an associate, and then every single thing in every mage's guild yes. can be picked up and not stolen and sold. And then talk to this guy, and he has the Storm Atronaut, which is the strongest conjuration spell. Then after this, I just go to the Arcane University. Come in here, talk to this guy, and he will give you Bound Sword, 
Ghost Walk, which is, walk, which is invisibility, and Immobilize, which is paralyzed. And I don't think you can get paralyzed and invisibility from anyone other than him, actually. Also, Reflect Spell. And then after that, I just come to Chaden Hall. Talk to this guy. Grab C Stride. And the shield spells. Just good to have, even if you don't really use them that much. And then you want to come to Coral. This is very important. Get all the pieces of the bound armor from this guy. And there's one other guy right here. This guy sells the rest of the armor pieces and every single other creature that you can conjure. Okay, and then after that, we're coming back to the tower just to start making some spells. Now, I'm going to recommend that you always make this spell drain health 90 for two seconds. That's 180 damage, and it's only a level 25 destruction spell. So for some reason, this spell has always been super, super overpowered. No matter what level you're at, you can always make a good version. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to boost Conjuration. Well, at level 25, you want to summon a scam for 20 seconds. All right, I call it C1 for Conjuration 1. And then you just summon, summon, summon. And then once your magic bar is out, you just wait, press back. And then once it's at 50, then I make summon scamp for 49 seconds. And then once it's at 75, I do summon flame atronaut for 88 seconds. You want to use the spells that cost the most magic and then just wait. That's the quickest way to boost skills. And then once you get your conjuration to 100, which takes about an hour and a half, I can make a full set of summonable armor for 100 seconds, which I call Suit. And this is a full set of Daedric armor right at level 1. Boom. You cannot go wrong with Daedric armor at level 1. Okay. I'm going to go over how to boost every magic skill, but I don't recommend you do it. It does take an extremely long time, so I would pick and choose a couple out of the spells I show you. And right here, I just want to give you an example of all the decent conjuration spells. There's a Wraith. This is the classic Frost Atronaut that we all know and love. And of course, the Storm Atronaut, which is the strongest summonable creature in the game, definitely. Okay, now we're just going to talk about boosting Alteration, okay? Now, to make these spells that I'm about to show, you only have to get it to 75. So for level 25, Water Breathing for 43 seconds. Level 50, Water Breathing for 103 seconds. And then once it's at 75, if you want to get it to 100, I just use this spell, which is Water Breathing and Water Walking for two full minutes, which I call H2O. This is a spell that I keep on me at all times through all playthroughs. Slap that in the wheel. And I'll just give you a little example here. You just come in. Boom. Who needs to be an Argonian when you can make spells and become Jesus Christ? All right. Now, the other level 75 alteration spell I make is open very hard lock on target or touch. If you have it on touch, you can use it underwater, but target is good enough for my purposes. And that I always keep there. And then if you want a full Grand Soul Gem, come to the Arcane University and you can just use this at any time and then get into anything you want and it doesn't count as lock picking or stealing, so you won't get in trouble. And then I want to make a suit of armor and you see that right there, your killing has been observed by forces unknown. Kill any innocent person and then that means the Brotherhood will come and find you the next time you sleep. But anyways, I kill a guy, I take his armor, I pay a thousand bucks, whatever doesn't matter when you have 300,000 and now we got a suit of armor and now that we also have that soul gem I'm just gonna quickly make 400 so I know where to come if I ever need any the reason I showed it at the arcane university is because that's one of the two places where it's guaranteed to be okay now I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of enchanting here we're gonna make a sword and in this one you have points, 1600 points is the most you can have for a grand soul gem. And I call this death, drain health, 88 points for one second. And fire damage, 30 points for one second. Best sword you can make. Okay. And then, you know, because I'm a mage, I just put a magic effect on every single one of these. But I recommend, guys, that you don't enchant your armor until you get your repair to 50. Just keep that in mind. And then for illusion, do light 100 feet for however many seconds, then 81 seconds, and then at the third, invisibility for 99 seconds. And then once you get your illusion up, 
You don't have to get it to 100 like me, but I just wanted to give you an example. Then you can make a spell which is invisibility for two minutes and in oblivion when you go invisible, nothing can detect you no matter what you do. It still wears off when you click things, but nothing can detect you. And also, the other illusion spell I make is something I call stop, which is paralyzed for 10 seconds because some enemies are resistant to magic. And those ones, you just want to paralyze and then strike them with whatever you have. See? Just have a bit of fun. Paralyze, then drain. Okay, now we're going to talk about mysticism. To get mysticism to 100, the spells I use is detect life 21 seconds, 100 feet, level 1, level 2, 100 feet for 51 seconds, and then level 3, I do reflect spell 100% for 3 seconds. Mysticism is the category I use the least. This is about the only spell I use that's a mysticism spell, and I reflect spell 100% for 10 seconds. And there aren't very many enemies that are so powerful with magic that they will kill you in one or two hits, but there are certainly lots of enemies that when you use this, they will kill themselves. Very effective. Okay, now we're going to talk about restoration. This is the most painful skill to get to 100, and it took me like 7 hours. At level 25, you do Fortify Fatigue 100 points for however many seconds, then 50, 100 points for 103 seconds, and then for 75, I actually had to make it two separate effects there. But anyways, for the healing spell that I make, you only need it at level 75, which is Restore Health 100 points for 1 second, which is more than enough and definitely as good of a healing spell as any. Now we have our full wheel, a suit of armor, invisibility, destruction, walk and breathe on water, reflect spell, paralyze, pick any lock, and healing. That is just perfect. And then we got everything to 100 except destruction and lock picking. Okay, level 33. Now I'm gonna talk about the Thieves Den, which is the Thieves Guild DLC. All right, now it's a nice DLC to boost your lockpick skill, and if you're playing by the rules, it's a good way to get money, but, you know, with duplicate glitch, it doesn't really matter that much. But anyways, you come here, there's this little underground base under the castle of Anvil, and it does actually have a secret entrance to get in also. You just gotta kill these skeletons, and then come over to this ship, and then you'll find the lady where you buy all of the upgrades. And then once you buy the upgrades, you can go back, and you have a team of thieves that you can send out raiding yeah. and you have four new vendors that will sell you spells and other stuff but the most important thing about this DLC is it gives you a chest that can never be picked so you can boost your lockpick to 100 in about 45 minutes you just duplicate lockpicks click A then click X you know you need about 4000 to get to 100 and it's if you have 400 scrolls it takes absolutely no time at all and then Pick them all up, and then just drill X for auto attempt. Just drill, drill, drill. La, 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 la. You know? Like I said, guys, for level purposes only, that's why I use this DLC. Because it's an easy skill. And now we got our lock picking to 100, and the only thing left is destruction. And I just want to show you guys, you get to level 40, these are what my stats look like. Okay, now to boost destruction and any attack skills at all, whether it's blunt, blade destruction or marksman which is archery then you can just come to this one shrine and this one shrine works better in particular more than everything else because these npcs can't die so when you just attack them constantly your skills go up and it doesn't take very long to get skills to 100 by attacking these guys you know maybe an hour a little more but just wanted to let you guys know and point that out and then once i got my destruction to 100 uh, these are the levels that I use for 25, 50, and 75. And then I make a spell. I make two separate spells when I have my destruction to 100. One I call D4, which is drain health 100 points for 10 seconds. That's a thousand damage, you guys. There's almost nothing that can live through this. And that is one I have, but some enemies, for some reason, are totally unaffected by that. So I make a separate spell that I call Fucked, because if I touch you with this, you will certainly be fucked, which is Drain Health 100 points for one second, and Shock Damage 100 points for one second. Nothing can resist this. Alright, this spell is so powerful that the Gatekeeper is a one-hit kill, and the Grand Champion of the Arena is a one-hit kill. Okay, now you just sleep, and I'm max level, guys. The max level is between 46 and 50. It just depends on what you choose for your 
major skills. And because of this coronavirus, we've been self-isolating in our home for 289 in-game days. And yeah, we're max level. Okay, now I'm gonna touch on how to start the arena, which is a lot of fun. And if, again, if you're playing by the rules, great way to get money. Just be ready and save before you go through the door every single time because for some reason, the one door at the arena is the only door in the whole game that doesn't autosave every time you go through it. Super annoying. Okay, now I'm gonna touch on how to join the Thieves Guild, okay? You just come to the waterfront and then you read this poster and then you can talk to a guard. Hello, citizen. Ask about the Grey Fox. He's that thief that the Imperial Watch are always going on about. He likes to steal from. And then after you talk to them about him, just come and find this Jim, beggar. Thank you for your help. And just bribe the shit out of him. Or Go ahead. you know, you can do it legitimately if you don't have the money, but Thanks. And then you ask him about the Grey Fox. Are you looking for him? I think I trust you enough to tell you this secret. And then you just come up and talk to this guy, and that is how you start the Thieves' Guild. Do I know? You say a beggar told you to seek me out? Good enough for me, then. And if you get the Great Cowl, which is the end is game object for the we Thieves' Guild, you can commit any box, crime and do whatever you want while you're wearing it. And if you take it off, guards don't know the first it was steps. you and you're not in any trouble, which is super nice. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the Fighter Stronghold DLC. This is my favorite home, definitely, in the game. Now, you get this, and you have your own personal castle. Definitely my favorite home. You just come here, walk up. There's going to be some people attacking the guards. Kill them, and then talk to this one guard after you go through the gate, and he will send you in the direction to get all of the upgrades. Come in this little inn, and then just talk to this guy, and you will get all the upgrades for Battlehorn Castle. All right. And when you walk up to this, it increases your repair skill by 15 if you click it, which is super helpful. And then coming inside, I'm just going to show you a little bit of the place. You come up here, and you can also make trophies for all of those little circular pads on the ground there. And the bedroom is definitely my favorite part by far. You come in here. Really nice place to live. You have a maid, which I have tormented to no end in my past playthroughs. And then, right over here, is my favorite place in the game to stash and display my stuff. I just love it. Okay, and then also, when you come into the far basement, I actually discovered this like so many years after playing just by screwing around shooting arrows at this guy. There is this secret little area. You can come in here, make your way all the way down, and there's a skeleton with a unique one-of-a-kind sword, which when you equip it, it gives you a spell, an enchanted shield that does 10 light and 3 valorous stones, which recharge all your magical items at once in your inventory. And yeah, just another cool bonus to this neat castle, you know? Dragon Breath. That's what it looks like. And this is what it looks like when I display all the stuff that we've gotten so far up to this point in the video. Because I am a true nerd to my core and I always have to display all of my goodies. Know what I'm saying? The hardest part is certainly getting staffs in a barrel. I don't recommend you try ever. And then just all the good stuff that we got from the market and the suit of armor that we made. A couple gems, the Valor Stones, you know how it is. I'm gonna talk about the Vile Lair. I thought about leaving this out for my video, but the reason I included it is because in Oblivion, when you become a vampire, it totally sucks and the sun can kill you, and it is totally awful. And with this DLC, you do have a Dark Brotherhood style hideout, and you can instantly get rid of your vampirism if you would like. Or if not, you can have a guy who is permanently always asleep, and you can just feed on him to keep your vampirism at a minimum, so you don't have to suffer all the negative effects. And then this is what it looks like fully upgraded. You've got a little alchemy garden here. You have this little evil follower who's a vampire who you can send out to kill for you. I don't really know what the point of that is, but 
And then in this room, right over here, you can come in here and when you grab the items from the rocks around the room and then click that spire right there, then you instantly get rid of your vampirism, which is so nice because in Oblivion it's so hard to get rid of it. And then I'll just show you here the guy that you can feed on permanently. If you want to be a vampire, that is. And then the bedroom slash hangout area. It's pretty basic, but still kind of neat. Like I said, vampire hideout, you got your coffin. This is definitely the most bare and naked and boring DLC that has to do with having a hideout. Like it's not as cool as the Mage's Tower or the Battlehorn Castle, but it's still something, I guess, right? And then in here, if you are an evil character, this shrine will give you effects, but I'm good, so it doesn't actually do anything for me. And in here is a nice little dagger, decent for beginners. And then we have a secret quick access out. Okay, and now I'm going to be talking about Anvil, which is where you join the Fighters Guild, get the best house if you don't want any DLC, and start the Knights of the Nine. Okay, these are all my favorite stuff. Then you just walk up to this place, come in what here, and I, talk to this guy, and ask I him for a contract, and that is how you start the Fighters work? Guild. The Fighters Guild is always looking for new members. Okay, and if you have the Knights of the Nine DLC, which I definitely recommend you get, you guys, it is an entire separate guild that you are the leader of. If you're familiar with the stuff from the Creation Club, the Divine Crusader, this is a guild where you quest to get all of this armor set. Each of them is a holy relic, and I do recommend you do this after the Thieves Guild and the Dark Brotherhood, because if you commit a single crime, you cannot wear the Divine Crusader armor. And to start, you just come and talk to this lunatic, ask about the chapel attack. And then the only way that you can actually get all the pieces is by reading this paper and going to each individual of the nine divine shrines, which is why most people miss this, because there's no actual quest markers at all to starting this whole thing. I'm going to the one of RK at the very bottom left there, and each of the shrines looks like this, and you just have to click on it and go to all nine, and then that's how you start that. Definitely recommend that one, guys. Okay, moving on. We're going to be talking about how to get the best house real quick. You just come into the bar, the inn in Anvil, Red talk Anvil. to this guy, ask to buy yes, his grandfather's manor, like and for 5,000 caps so you get the best house the in the game that doesn't include DLC. Then you just come to this big place by the chapel. It's completely destroyed and looks awful when you come inside, and then all you have to do is come up, sleep in the bed, and you will be attacked by ghosts. No match for the fuck spell. And then once that happens, you just go and read this scroll and pick it up. I always forget it, but don't forget it. Pick it up or you'll have to come all the way back later. Come back to the bar where you found him. This as guy will tell you, you that he ran place, away to the Imperial the City and then you just have to go find I him in the Imperial he's City. His way to the Imperial City. Come here, find him at this inn, show him the scroll, and he will come back to the house to lift the curse with you. That I'm the only one can open the secret door in the map. Once you're inside, you'll just okay. have to fight through a bunch of you wraiths and then make your way to the very Hopefully basement. You can make it to the basement without too much fighting. This opens. I'm you'll find this wall, and right behind is his grandfather's remains, who's been haunting the place for however long. You click on the bed to talk to him, and then you just have to go upstairs, grab the hand, come back down. And then you'll have to fight him. No match, no match. And then once you do that and come upstairs, the house is completely nice, and your new home. Come up here, you got a bedroom, and then a little office, balcony over the living room. If it was medieval times, I would live here, why not? If you decide to play Oblivion after all of these years, guys, then do yourself a favor and get the Shivering Isles DLC. This is my favorite DLC of all time, truly a Bethesda gem, and 
it is the final story of what happens to the Oblivion character, which is to become the Daedric Prince of Madness, Sheogorath. You just come here, there's this little portal in the middle of Nabin Bay. And then once you arrive, you just kill this guy who runs out and he's insane, and then Sheogorath will tell you to come on in. This DLC is also useful for boosting a couple skills, which I'm going to show. Really? Do come in! It's lovely in the aisles right now. Perfect time for this. Come in and you're greeted by my buddy Haskell. Yes, what can I do for Who becomes your I'm summonable sure my butler? Lord be most pleased, assuming you ever managed to see him. Enjoy your stay. Woo. This is just such a beautiful deal to see you guys. It's not dark and gray like most of Bethesda's stuff. And then you come over here, you'll find the gatekeeper fighting these guys. The gatekeeper at this point is actually unkillable. So, and he is an extremely powerful guy. So you just take a suit of armor off these guys. And the gatekeeper will actually not attack you after you go down the stairs a little bit. So you put on a set of their armor. Me personally, I duplicate a bunch of repair hammers and keep them at the bottom of the stairs. But also the skills that you can boost are Armorer, which right now mine is at 5, Blade, Block, Blunt, Hand to Hand, Heavy Armor, Light Armor, Destruction, which I already showed you, and uh, Marksman. So, But keep in mind that you have to not continue in the quest if you want to boost all this. And then you just let him reef on you. This guy destroys armor faster than anybody in the whole game. And it takes about one minute for him to destroy your full set. And then you just come and spam it like this. See how many times the skills increase there? Boom, 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 boom. Alright, and now we got it from 5 to 18 right there, just in one stretch. Now, I'm going to talk about how to kill him real quick. You just come into this house and I find this dead. guy, and he I will ask you to Rumor get some lock open too. so that he can get some bones. Good with a lock pick. We can help each other out. Hurry, pick that lock open. I can hear them in there. Here. And then you just have to let this guy hit the gatekeeper once, and then you can kill him. One touch of fucked should do it. And then you just grab the keys and go through the gates, guys. And that's how you actually start this DLC. And I just love this place, man. It becomes your domain. You rule over this at the end of it. And this is your personal castle. Half of the land is Mania, which is beautiful and nice. Half of Dementia, which is gross and swampy. And that's your kingdom. And then once you walk up to this place, I'm just going to show you a couple little quick things. Now you come into the mania side and then you Did can you just walk right up to this place by walking to here you should have found one piece of amber and one piece of madness or and then if you want you can duplicate it and then you will instantly have enough for the amber armor set. You just pick it up, come in here, talk to this guy okay. and he will forge you everything at no cost. It just takes amber. And then when it's all done this is what it looks like. Once you complete this DLC, you guys, this is your kingdom. This is your personal castle. This is my favorite area in the game other than Battlehorn Castle. Your personal kingdom at the Isles. And then this is your main throne room where you meet Sheogorath, one of my favorite characters in Oblivion, certainly. A new arrival. And then I'm just going to quickly touch on the other side of the kingdom, Dementia. If you have a lot of madness ore, then you can come and see this smith. And this is actually my absolute favorite set of armor that is in the game. I always do this first. Start this DLC, come here and make this awesome set of madness armor. This I know is in Creation Club in Skyrim. And just a really beautiful, cool, strong, powerful set of armor. You cannot go wrong. Hi. Your pardon Lots of damage, I and once it's enchanted, it's even better. So that pretty much sums it up for this video guys. I hope you liked it. I know it was a lot to absorb and had a lot to do with downloadable content, but I sure love this how game and wanted to show you all of my favorite parts of it. So guys, let me know what I may have missed. Let me know how you start and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.